just going to talk about a concept known as time or a module known as time which is actually inbuilt as part of Python so you don't need to go downloading it right anyway let's imagine that we have an industrial process uh, where we have to do something every second right so a good way of representing that might be for I in process or I in say range We'll say range 0 to 25. We'll say we're going to do it 25 times. And we're just going to print the process. We're not actually going to do the process. That would be lots of code probably. And we're just going to print process um, process uh, in, in progress. Yeah, process in progress, right? And we'll just run that. Now, that's already good, but it's been done 25 times instantly. Now, imagine that there's a process, you know, an industrial process that is done every second. So, for example, I don't know, you might want to press material once every second, right? Now, if you were to program the machine that processes material, uh, that presses material like this, it would just do 25 presses extremely rapidly. Maybe if you made it for in range zero to a thousand, it could do a thousand really rapid presses. It might break, you know, trying to run like this. The machinery might, might not be fit for that purpose, who knows? So you want it to do that every single second, right? So that it has a break and a pause in between. And it might be that another process feeds it something every second and cleans it every second, right? So it gets new material, roughly every 0 0.8 seconds and the old materials cleared within 0 0.1 seconds after the press but there's still that 0 0.1 second of you know error there we don't want to be pre double pressing something right so we need to have each press to be one second apart right well we can import a module known as time and we can rewrite this and we can say for i in range 0 to 25 what we want to do is we want to use this time module and we're going to use something called time.sleep right and whatever we put in this uh, parenthesis here is the amount of seconds it'll sleep for right then we're going to print out pressing some material right and as this loop runs, I'll explain what's happening. So, you can see this is going quite slowly. Every second, um, the word pressing some material is being printed out to screen. So what's happened here is time.sleep actually delays um, the loop or whatever action you're doing by a second. So there's a one second delay here where this line time.sleep is. And then this is printed. And then when we restart the loop, that uh, delay starts again, and then pressing some material is printed out. In, in, in the real world, we have a bunch of code actually enacting this pressing material. So it wouldn't just print out pressing some material, material would actually be pressed. Okay. So what this time.sleep is, is a delay, right? And for whatever amount, whatever number you put in there is the amount of time it'll be delayed for. Okay. So let's say we don't want a one second delay. Let's say we're playing a game. So for, but for I in range 0 to 30, I think that you can use uh, non-integers. So we'll use 0 0.5. And then we're going to print do an action in game. Okay. Now that's that seems to be printing out a bit faster than the pressing some material uh, print out, and that's because we set sleep to be half as long. So the delay is only half a second here. So we can set the delay to be any amount of time we want. Just to just to show you this, uh, we'll put for i in range zero to two time dot sleep 
four. Right now, you're really going to see a difference. And action. We're still waiting for the first. There's an action. We're waiting. We're waiting. We're still waiting. And another action. And you can see that the delay is substantially larger than the delay before it, right? So this way we can make delays. Uh, we might do that, you know, we might we might be programming uh, something that can automate a game, for example, and certain actions might have to be done with uh, certain intervals that are exactly the same, might be intervals in some kind of process. You might even have a dynamic number that you read from somewhere else, um, to do whatever you might do this if you're trying to web scrape and you need some delay so that you don't get blocked out of the server there's many reasons you could use this but this is quite a useful function right now there are also some uh, other cool functions here in the time module and i'm going to print out one of them i'm going to print time dot asc time right and what ASC time will give you? Well, there's a lot of things it'll give you, but if you don't give it an argument, it will actually give you the current uh, the current time. Right, so here we are. That's the current time there, as you can see. Now, if, for example, that's the current day and the current time, that's the whole format. If, for example, I want the actual uh, time since the 1st of January 1970 at midnight, I can use time dot time. Right? It seems like a very specific amount of time. And this is the amount of seconds since the 1st of January 1970 at midnight UTC. This seems kind of useless on its in its own, right? But if I if I use it again, if I print it out again, we can see that there's actually you know about an eight second difference there something like that or a seven second difference between these two times we can actually use these two times to um, print out the amount of time something's taken so we can say for i in range zero to five we're going to put a variable we're going to say uh, f time oops f time which means first time is equal to time dot time right i'm going to say for i in range that i'm going to say time dot sleep for two seconds i'm going to print time is now the sorry the amount of seconds that have passed are And we're going to add the string of time dot time, right? Let's see how this goes. I might have to do it that way. Ah, that's why. It's str. What am I thinking? Sorry. God, so much programming in Swift there. All right, so... We'll actually get this the amount of time that I passed. Oh, that's not what I wanted. I actually want this, the str of time dot time uh, minus f time because I want to get the difference between the original time and the amount of time that's passed. Okay, two point two seconds, then four seconds, six seconds, eight seconds. And 10 seconds so you can see for each of these two second delays we're adding two seconds to the amount of time that's passed in seconds so by using a time dot time declaration and assigning it to a variable and then comparing it to each step in our in our for loop and using a sleep uh, a sleep declaration a sleep function sorry we can actually um, show the passing of time in seconds right not going to go over this this is all quite simple stuff um just wanted to make you aware of this module it's very useful for as i said web scraping 
uh, for some automation in games, automation perhaps in mechanical processes, and also you can check the passage of time uh, down to these, I'd assume, a milliseconds by using the time.time .time and comparing it to a later time.time .time, um, declaration. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed.